Hey, what's up everyone? In today's video, we'll be looking at the ECO Perfecta. This is an Italian pump lock that has six pins and one very nasty trap pin that needs to be dealt with. Let's take a look at the key. Uh, I actually didn't start with lock got it because I wanted to show you the action first because it's kind of hard to imagine how it looks when it's all together. So the key is pretty cool looking and uh, you can tell that we have some bitting in here. So these uh, cuts correspond to six pins that are hidden inside of this huge uh, lock body. So in this case, the pins are located uh, in here, on actually where the flag is. Here is one pin. Here is second pin, here is third pin, and the same is on the other side, one, two, and three. And these pins, because it's a pump lock, needs to need to be pushed. So basically the action of the key looks like this. You push it in and then you can turn. Alright, so basically that's the whole concept of this lock, so I think we can take a look at the guts. Alright, so here we have the guts, you can see there is quite a lot going on, so let's just hop into it. So first I will show you the pins or the action of the lock. So as you could see the, uh, the key is being pushed inside of the housing and by that it actually pushes down uh, the key pins that are inside of this part I guess you could call it the core so normally the key pins are just chilling in here I will demonstrate let's just insert three of them in here okay so they are there without any key and now I will just put the key in and you can see that suddenly they reach the shear line. So this is this basically is the shear line, all of this uh, surface. And this is where the drivers rest. So there are no drivers obviously in there, but if I put them there and you join these pieces, you have a lock that works like this, a pump lock. So uh, hopefully you can see the whole point uh, of this lock. Maybe one thing that is pretty interesting is that there is actually overmilling in this core. So probably you can see it, but here, here. So four out of six chambers contain overmilling. So that's pretty interesting. I'm not sure if it does anything, but it's there. So that's pretty cool. Uh, and yeah, all of the drivers are very, very tapered. They may not look like they are, but you have to push them like a million times before they truly get set. So this is what the drivers look like. And you can see that we have, yeah, we have six chambers for key pins, but seven chambers for drivers, sort of. And indeed, this one is actually the trap pin and probably the most difficult part of this lock. So, the trap pin works basically like this. Uh, at the resting state, it's just chilling inside of this chamber. It's just pushed like this. And it doesn't have a corresponding chamber in the core, of course. But, if you pick this lock without a key, of course, uh, and you start turning, you start turning like this, suddenly at 90 degrees and then later on at 270 degrees of uh, turn, this trap pin will suddenly spring inside of this chamber, right? Because there's only key pin after we pick it. And then after more turning, it goes here. And the trap pin sort of soft bricks the lock and you all have to either release it with some tool or you have to prevent it from engaging so that's basically two ways how to how to approach uh, 
how to approach this problem. So, if you want to prevent releasing uh, of the trap pin, I recommend you watch videos by the Boring Engineer or Amonitor Darkly because they went this way, uh, they made a tool, they basically somehow sticked it in there as they were approaching the trap pin and uh, they overcome it like this. Or if you want to release it, you can watch my video or you can watch Talan's video because I was inspired by Talan Pick. Uh, although I modified the strategy a little. So what's this about? Basically what I did is that I let the trap pin engage uh, and I so the core basically stopped its rotation at 90 degrees. So it was like this, right? Or actually rather like yeah, like this. So, I, what I saw was basically, of course, the housing, and behind it, I had this. And one thing that is important is that this housing is not thin, this face is not thin. The metal goes a bit further, right? So, this is actually pretty thick. So, in order to reach the trap pin, you have to go inside with some tool. Talon used this SSD hook. I didn't, I will show you what I used. You have to go deep and you have sort of you have to sort of find the tip of this trap pin that is somewhere in here and you have to push it like inside while applying tension and that's how you uh, continue the rotation. So it's very awkward. It's very awkward and it was it was sort of impossible almost for me to reach it with the SSD hook because uh, I don't know. Why? Because <laughs> Talon did it like without problems, maybe it depends on the length of the driver, but I managed to do it like maybe twice and that was all. So I had to look for some other uh, solution that is, and this solution should be something different than creating a tool because, you know, I really hate creating tools. And suddenly a flash of inspiration, I saw one of these Small tensioners from Multipeak, they are sold, I think, in uh, sets of four. Uh, I, I think I have a yeah, yeah. there it is. So this is basically the whole set, SP400, maybe. This is one of them, I don't know which one uh, exactly, but... Yeah, this is the perfect tool for pushing the trap in, because what I did was that I sort of wedged it inside behind this thick housing, and then I just pushed it in and I, I was able to reach the trap pin. It wasn't without problems as you will see during the pig it was kind of sketchy because there was also my cat running around, running around but uh, yeah it worked and that's basically enough for me. So yeah this this was the, the savior of the of the day for me. So yeah and one more thing to mention of course is how to tension this lock because you know it's not really uh, obvious how to do it. It's kind of weird. So uh, I did not try to reinvent the wheel here because uh, one of these pieces from Banggood uh, the tension set is actually perfect for this lock and most of people who pick this lock on video use this. So yeah I just went with this and it was it was good. So. That's something you have to do for tension. This log actually requires a ton of tension to f get any feedback, so I recommend applying a lot of tension. And if you're getting no feedback, apply more. I did it as well. And yeah, I think that's pretty much it I wanted to say about this video. Again, uh, if you want to try another method, you can watch some uh, other uh, other guys who picked it because there are multiple ways how to attack this log but yeah I just wanted to go with the least effort uh, possible way so if you like me you can try this uh, method definitely all right so I think that's pretty much all I wanted to say uh, so let's go ahead and get this log picked all right here we go so works perfect so let's start by applying some clockwise tension. Okay, and yeah, let's start by looking for those binders. So on the right side, number four, five, nothing, six, little click there. Left side, one, click there, two, 
Click there. Three. Nothing. Four is pretty loose. Click on five. And a little click on six. Okay, I will just give this right side pins a little poke. Just to check they are all in their place. And on the left, one, two, and three was binding. Perfect. We're getting there. We'll click on four and five. Okay, now I'm pretty much losing a lot of feedback, but that's because the tapered part begins. So, what I'm now going to do is I'm going to crank up the tension as much as possible. Yeah, like this, and I'm basically just looking for any kind of small resistance this pin will give me. And I will take it as a progress. That's how you that's how it goes with tapered pins. I'm not sure. Okay. I thought I overset something, but I think it's fine. Okay, even more tension because why not? More tension is always good. Alright. Okay, so things are settling to their places. It's really interesting how, how tapered this lock is. Those pins don't even look like they should act like this, but they do. I guess it has something to do with the age of the lock. Okay, I got a pretty nice click on 5. Okay, so now 2 is giving me a little more feedback. Even more tension now. Okay, click there. I think the right side is actually picked now. Now, probably only one pin left on the left side. Maybe not. Not sure. Okay, there it is. So now I will start to rotate. And now the trap pin will engage. Okay, it clicked into place. Uh, okay, so now let me try to put my special tool in there, if I can. Okay, it's a really tight the whole process of pushing it in. It's actually not that easy. Come on. I swear it worked today. <laughs> Okay, it's there. Perfect. So now I'll just okay, there's the pin I think. I don't wanna slip off obviously. Okay, I think I pushed it, but maybe maybe not. Let's push it again. Now I will have to somehow put this tensioner in there. Doesn't matter how. Okay, it's there. And, and nothing just yet. Okay, pretty sure I pushed the. Okay, right. I rotated the lock a little in the <laughs> vise, but the core is turning. So. Yeah, like that. So now several pins will start engaging, but not at the same time, which makes our life a bit easier. So this one, I can't remember which which one comes next. So I'll just try all of them. Okay, perfect. Now other two pins will engage. Let me see a little light. Okay, so that one and that one. I guess so. Mm -hmm. Okay, this 
the voice is not exactly stable. Uh, and I forgot which pins are engaging now. Actually, I cannot feel them somehow. That's there, and that one is there. Let me try. Okay, this perfect. Now more rotation and more pushing pins. I think this one. Yes, and now here. Okay, we're almost past one to the other. Okay, perfect. Now the third pin engages again. And we have our cat here, you don't see her, but she's here. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, so now I will try to <laughs> install back the... Uh, the engineer. yes, there she goes. Very interesting. Okay, give me a second, because... Yes, that's the tail. <laughs> Give me a second, I'm sorry. Oh, come on. <laughs> sorry, I'm, I'm distracted now. <laughs> I'm having a hard time pushing this. Okay, come on. It's almost there. What the hell? Yeah, I get, I got it, I got it. Okay, sorry, it's just a Luna making Luna things. It's very interesting for her. Yeah, so I just have to yeah, put this here, right? Can I do that, please? Yeah, whatever. It can work like this as well. All right. I think we are past the drop pin now. now. Let's just remove all our contraptions out of the lock, please. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, now I will just finish the rotation. Okay, I think it's pretty much already finished. Yeah, the pins are back where they were, so yeah, let's just switch to autofocus, yeah, the pins are back to their original places, perfect, so yeah, that's the lock, basically 360. Alright, and now I will try to sort of get it right. Not too difficult, but I have a cat on my lap, so hopefully nothing will happen. Uh, yeah, so first of all, you need to undo these two screws in the back. Okay. And you should sort of hold this tailpiece because it, there is a spring and you don't want it to spring at you. So I'm holding the tailpiece pushed a little. Okay. Now just remove this. Pretty simple. There is a spring. And now this plunger or whatever is in the middle. I will just take it out if I can. Yes, so this goes out with the washer or what it is. Okay, so and now the whole core wants to wants to go out, but I won't let it go out just yet. I just want uh, this. Yeah, that's like a screwdriver that will help me push the core together. Yeah, now. Ah, oh, come on. The spring force is kind of strong here. Okay. Perfect. Now we have 
I need to hold this together, you know, because it would spring at me. And now I will just carefully separate these two parts. Yeah, like that. Okay, that's fine, I think. Yeah, that's fine. Perfect. So, we have our drivers here. So, this one actually belongs in here. So, first I will, I guess I will remove the drivers, right? Because why not? So, that's like one, two, three. That's the trap pin. I'll put him aside and one, two, three in here. Drivers out, and now the key pins for a lack of better word, they are key pins. Okay, so that's like the last one. Yeah. That's the first. Okay, this guy goes here and here. Second. Okay, there's just one more left, so I can do this. Right. Hello, it's out. Okay, so we managed to get the lock without any disasters, which is always nice. Here's the all the pins in there. Okay, so this was definitely not the prettiest pick ever, but it worked and I did not have to do any tools, so that's what's important for me. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video uh, and maybe you will find some inspiration if you want to try to pick this lock. It's actually pretty fun to pick. Uh, I kind of like the tapered uh, feeling of these pins. Yeah, and that's all for today. So thank you for watching and see you next time with the next video, hopefully really soon. Until then, have a nice one. Bye.